हरि ओम yesterday we saw that there are this four main uh, um, topics or path shown in uh, bhagavad gita one is the path of karma then it talks about upasana talks about knowledge talks about meditation so this uh, in gita itself bhagwan says i am showing only two paths path of karma and path of knowledge so includes upasana jnana dhyana in jnana only in knowledge so bhagavad gita may uh, two things it tells mainly one is what is the what is dharma if we see the beginning of bhagavad gita it begins with the word dharma only dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyutsavah mamaka pandavaschayeva kima kurvata sanjaya and the last word is mama so dharma is a very Uh, highly technical term as we go along we will understand yesterday i said that dharma means karma or the law of karma dharma tells us how to live following certain values in life the path of righteousness what is right we should do what is not right we should avoid rather than following our own mind which tells us what we like and what we don't like we should listen to dharma which tells us what is right and what is not right so for dharma the praman is bhagavad gita upanishad the vedas the vedas are the praman for dharma and vedas are the praman for brahma brahma means the supreme reality praman means means to know means to know so it's praman for dharma what is right we come to know from the scriptures so nowadays many people have the habit of saying that what is wrong or what is right is uh, is what you call uh, is relative is uh, it depends and all sorts of things we say even if something wrong happens in the society then we have the law we have the constitution then there is a what you call a trial goes on sometimes the uh, innocent person is punished also sometimes those who are not innocent they are they are liberated also so all sorts of confusion is there when we only look at our human understanding of what is right and what is not right it cannot be conclusive there are cases where many innocent people are even 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 um, even capital punishment and later on they came to know oh that was a mistake sometimes when they cannot uh, come to a final judgment lot of judges they sit together and they vote if majority says he is guilty then they say yes he is so whether a person is right or wrong cannot be really determined by vote by just our thinking and all so for this the praman uh, are the scriptures for dharma hmm. because what is right for a person it involves lot of things for example if i ask you what 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 is right for me what type of life i should lead what type of action i should perform to really guide me you should be you should have the knowledge of everything you should know my past you should know my present you should not only know me but you should be able to know other beings around me 
you should have the knowledge of the whole world you should have the knowledge of all the other beings then only we can guide that person ki ye karo aapke liye acha hai we should also know what is acha what is good many so called intelligent people keep guiding other people and they fall into trouble yeah? advice and all now this on this mobile also you keep getting advice as soon as you wake up you get one advice from someone ne yeah? best thing is not to follow that advice so to know what is right and what is not right though it is very complex very difficult but for that shastra is the praman and that is how it begins also the bhagavad gita begins with this confusion in arjuna's mind arjuna tells our uh, bhagwan shri krishna that dharma sammodha chetaha i am totally thoroughly confused regarding dharma i don't know what i should do because my mind tells me that i should not fight this war they are my own people my brothers my uncles but as a kshatriya i feel that i should defend dharma it is not about my personal thing it is about establishing righteousness it is about establishing order if someone does something wrong one should not just accept it one means the one who is ruling one who are the kings huh? so he got confused at one place his intellect was telling him that what uh, i should fight but his emotions were telling him no i should not fight so there was confusion and such thing happens in our day to day life also like a surgeon he can do lot of operation in a day but when he find that the patient is his own son then he cannot take proper decision he doesn't know what is right if while cutting the patient he will feel oh is my son how can oh this is my son's blood and all sorts of thing he will get confused so regarding what is dharma what is right and what is not right the shastras are the praman and the shastra when i say i mean the vedas and all the scriptures which are derived from vedas the puranas the itihas itihas me mahabharat ramayan and a lot of other smritis and it is said that when there is any conflict in understanding suppose the book of itihas tells you one thing and the vedas seems to be telling something else then we should go to the vedas huh. so what happens when we follow the path of dharma what happens when we follow the path of righteousness again the scripture says that two things we gain one is abhyudhay and another is nishreyas abhyudhay means all round prosperity because when we act in the proper way it leads to prosperity also outer prosperity there is a order in the society if everyone follows this dharma there is wealth also increases comfort increases there is enough on earth to provide for all the beings on earth but when there is adharma then injustice happen and uh, some people get dip, uh, what you call they have to suffer because of that so dharma is good for an individual for a, uh, what you call a parivar samaj for the nation etc so the scriptures tell us to lead a life of dharma it will be helpful for your welfare and for welfare of everyone so therefore one should take guidance our constitution or whatever rules and regulation we have that also should be in tune with what the scriptures are saying so abhyudaya means all around prosperity so you act 
and you will get the result. But if we act according to dharma, it will give us sustainable result in the sense even our future will be taken care of. Huh. Otherwise, we will look for immediate benefit. I do something, immediately I get the result, I feel very happy. But the scriptures will say that though you may get immediate result in this, this action is not proper. So you avoid it, don't do it, follow the path of dharma. One of the very interesting thing about dharma, a uh, lot of values are mentioned, but one of the very interesting value is keeping your word, keeping your promise. Vachan. In, uh, in Ramayana also there is a, that famous statement is there. What is that? Prana jaya par vachana na jaya. In that we have the story that Dasharat Maharaj had given vachan. He had promised kai kai. And then that Kai Kai asked for that promise. Now that promise involved Ramchandra Ji going to the forest and all. So he was told that sorry the program has changed little bit. You know, your coronation was, uh, was to take place but now there is some minor complications are there. And in the high summit level meeting, we have decided that you have to go to the forest. Ramchandra ji, he accepts it. He, he says, I will go to the forest. His father is feeling so bad. He himself at one point, he is telling Bhagwan that don't listen to even me. Don't listen to me. You stay. You don't go to forest. But he says, no. Because this is dharma. If we don't keep our words, then the, all the relationships in this world will collapse. Most of the litigations in the world, most of the problems are there in the world because we don't keep our words. Even while taking what you call that fera, ne, agni, some seven promises one has to keep. All our promises, everything, there is a sakshi. And for important promises, Agni is the Sakshi. Our local witnesses may change, but Agni doesn't change. At the time of death, finally the body is given to Agni. And it is said when a person dies, the Agni Devata takes us to the appropriate Loka. Because it has witnessed all that we have done. So, Vachan, keeping our word, is very important. Nowadays, because we don't keep our word, there are all those uh, things are there, stamp paper, sign, witness, all sorts of things. And when these words are kept, everything runs very smoothly. Even so-called negative practices, uh, means some things happening anti-social in the world, those anti-social group also they have their own rules. And they follow it very strictly, that if you don't listen, gone. Yeah. So keeping the promise is one of the, one example I am saying of dharma. So there are like ahimsa, ahimsa is considered paramo dharma, ahimsa, satyam, asteya. Asteya means not to take what doesn't belong to us. If we, it comes to us or if we have to take, we have to acknowledge it. Not only from other people, but also from nature. Therefore, we have this, that even from nature we keep taking food, clothing, shelter, so many things we get from nature. So we should acknowledge and we should return it. Take care of our nature, protect the trees, protect the rivers. All this is dharma only. Dharma doesn't mean just going to office and coming back home. Dharma is taking care, fulfilling all our responsibilities towards 
everything. So what exactly is good for me and for everyone? Who can tell? Only one who knows everything. One who has got the knowledge of everything. One who is Sarvadnya it is called. And that Sarvadnya is Ishvara. We'll come to Bhagwan himself will reveal his identity. That time we will know who is Ishvara. But that time now I am saying that Ishvara is one who is indicated as Sarvadnya Sarva Shaktiman. Sarvadnya means all knowing. Sarva Shaktiman means all powerful. And it is said that, that Ishvara has revealed the scriptures. The Vedas, they don't have any author. There are no human author. If you go past into time, you find that even the most ancient scriptures, like our own Ramayana, Mahabharata, we say that there is some author. But for the Vedas, there are no authors. There are no human authors. They are infinite. They are not very uh, little. Infinite. Now what is available is a little portion of the Vedas. But infinite are the Vedas. Each and every mantra, each and every letter of the Vedas have to be chanted in a particular musical tone. It is set, it is fixed. From time immemorially, immemorial, people are chanting these Vedas in the same way, wherever, right from north to south, east to west, all over our country or even beyond our country, wherever the Vedas are chanted, they are chanted in the same way. It cannot be a human, uh, what you call, product, because people will keep changing tunes. Then again, there are certain things mentioned in the Vedas which were not known to humanity, so called, in the scientific or other world. Then later on we came to know. Like the Vedas talk about the Sapta, what you call Dvipa, seven continents. When the plane and all was discovered, they discovered the seventh continent. Before that, People knew only the six continents. So there are certain things mentioned in the Vedas. Scientific things, things about art, things about uh, the about the about the what you call the planets and stars and galaxies and all, which were not known before, but they are there. So the Vedas are revealed by Ishvara himself. It is, there are, it is said that there are some beings who are born with the knowledge of the Vedas. And one such being who was born with the knowledge of the Vedas was Veda Vyasa. Veda Vyasa was born with that knowledge. See, just like some children are born with certain inclination, certain knowledge which they carry from their past lives. Hmm. There are some music composers who compose music in their young age also. They are born with that knowledge. Similarly, some rishis, some great masters, they are born with the knowledge of the Vedas and they impart it to their student. Like Yadnya Valkya was born with that knowledge. Hmm. Like Atharva Rishi and all. So the one topic of uh, the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of Vedas. If one cannot study the whole Vedas, even if one studies and masters and follows Bhagavad Gita, that is enough. It is said, Gita su Gita kartavyaha kim anya shastra vistarahi ya swayam padmanabhasya Mukha Padmat Vinishruta that you study Gita itself properly then you don't have to study other so many scriptures because it will guide you on the path of Dharma and on the path of Brahma it is directly revealed by Bhagwan's avatar only so 
सो धर्म गिव्स वन रिजल्ट इज अभ्युदय अभ्युदय में ऑल अराउंड प्रोस्पेरिटी फॉर एवरी वन एज आई सेड इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग टू टेक केयर ऑफ एनिमल बर्ड्स प्लांट नेचर ऑल्सो सो वेन वी फॉलो दिस पाथ ऑफ धर्म प्रॉपरली इट विल लीड टू ऑल अराउंड गुडनेस ऑफ द होल अर्थ नाउ डेज दे टॉक अबाउट सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट the keep spoiling the earth keep destroying the forest keep polluting all our rivers and now suddenly we have woken up and we see sustainable development we should not spoil the natural resources we should maintain it and all what they are saying not to spoil resources maintain it look take care of that is dharma only but it was forgotten so dharma has got a very broad understanding so abhyuday is all round prosperity and another thing which we gain through following this path of dharma is called nishrayasa nishrayasa means the state of enlightenment yesterday we talked about it as moksha moksha means remaining here in this world itself we become free of lot of our of all our bondages all our bondages means the 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 jiva that is i has wrongly identified and wrongly un- understood himself to be someone else there's a misunderstanding about my own nature about my own identity my my real identity is not known so bhagavad gita will help us to ascertain my real identity hmm that as when the topic comes it will become more clear hmm. who am i in the real sense will be revealed and once that happens the whole outlook toward the world changes one experiences great sense of peace and joy the description of an enlightened person is given in the second chapter sthita pragna samadhistah arjuna call him samadhistah ha sthita pragna se ka bhasha samadhistasya keshava one who is in samadhi now generally we have the understanding samadhi means aank band karke baith gaya hoga but no arjuna ask how does he walk how does he talk how does he interact with the world and bhagwan tells him how he interacts with the world his eyes are open he is interacting with the world he is talking communicating doing his work it is said about raja janak was an enlightened person but he was taking care of the kingdom so enlightenment doesn't mean that we go to the forest or close our eyes and sit in some cave but one can live in this world and that is shown by bhagwan krishna's life itself he was an en- bhagwan's avatar lived here as an enlightened being most active always happy but always in some trouble also right from childhood ne right? right from childhood people were after him not people one person after him to destroy him but he led a very wonderful life so that is nishrayasa state of enlightenment jivan mukti by living here and now we can gain the state of enlightenment so bhagavad gita will guide us on the path of dharma and on the path of brahma so what is the background of this bhagavad gita that we have to first understand so let us chant yesterday also we chanted let us chant the gita dhyanam and then we will see om parthaya pratibodhitam भगवता 
ನಾರಾಯಣೇನ ಸ್ವಯಂ ವ್ಯಾಸೇನ ಗ್ರಥಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಮುನಿ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಅದ್ವೈತಾಮೃತವರ್ಷಿಣೀ ಭಗವತೀ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಅಂಬತ್ವಾಮನುಸಂದಧಾಮಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ಭವದ್ವೇಷಿಣೀ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ವ್ಯಾಸ ವಿಶಾಲಬುದ್ಧೇ ಫುಲ್ಲಾರವಿಂದಾಯತಪತ್ರನೇತ್ರ ಭಾರತತೈಲಪೂರ್ಣ ಪ್ರಜ್ವಾಲಿಮಯ ಪ್ರದೀಪ ಪ್ರಪನ್ನ ಪಾರಿಜಾತ ಸ್ತ್ರೈಕಪಾಣೇಕಮುದ್ರಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೀತಾಮೃತದುಹೆ ನಮಃ ಸರ್ವೋಪನಿಷದೋ ದುಗ್ಧಾಗೋಪಾಲನಂದನ ಪಾರ್ಥೋವತ್ಸುಧೀರ್ಭೋಕ್ತ ದುಗ್ಧ ಗೀತಾಮೃತ ಮಹತ್ ವಸುದೇವಸು ಕಂಸಚಾಣೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕಿ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಮಹಾಭಾರತ is a text with some 1 lakh shlokas vast and it is said that what is there in mahabharata itself we see in this world and what is not in mahabharata is not there anywhere means everything is is mentioned in mahabharata the the ar- dharma arth kama moksha then about uh, raja dharma grahastha dharma vanprastha brahmacharya sanyasa human mind how it works human relationships how are the various conflicts which can arise in our life what happens to a person who follows the path of dharma what happens to those who f- don't follow the path of dharma who are those who had understood dharma properly who who are those who were little confused about dharma huh? all sorts of varieties you will find it is a textbook to understand our life in its holistic way with the help of examples it becomes clear so all these are various examples of various people are there through which we can understand the whole life veda vyas ji has written this mahabharata as i said ved vyas ji was born with the knowledge of the vedas he is considered to be bhagwan avatar only hmm? shankaram shankaracharyam keshavam badarayanam he is badarayan he is also called badarayan 
of Tara Bhagwan only. He was born with that knowledge. And it is said that uh, he wanted to write this whole Mahabharata, so he wanted a stenographer. All of you know the story. But again I will tell you a little bit. Huh? So he wanted a stenographer, so he requested Lord Ganesha. And he said, yes, I will be your stenographer. You dictate, I will write. But one condition, because you should not keep on, uh, what you call, you should not waste any time in between. You should continuously dictate. I will not, if you take a pause or if you don't dictate, I will leave the pen and go away. So you have to continuously dictate. Ved Vedji said, yes, I accept, but I also have one condition. He said that you should not write anything without understanding. <laughs> See, many people, they write notes and all. If you read their notes, pray. My own lecture, if I have to read that, I will be surprised, like, I kaha. <laughs> so, Ved Vedji told him, that you should not write without understanding. So that was the deal. So the, the whole thing was dictated and Ganesh Ji wrote it. Now and then, even Ganesh Bhagwan had to pause to comprehend the deeper impact or deeper import of what is written. So a lot of wonderful things are there in Mahabharata. There is a misunderstanding in the society that one should not keep Mahabharata at home. Jagda ho jayega. Jagda aisa bhi ho jata hai. <laughs> Mahabharata ke kaaran hota hai aisa nahi hai. Then some, one should not read and all. But that is wrong. That is a great mistake. Because it's a treasure house of all knowledge. Simplified. Vedas, very difficult to comprehend. But uh, the same knowledge is given in Mahabharata in a simple way. Even if you begin by reading just the translation, maybe a condensed version of it, then you will get more interested and can read the elaborate one. Read the original or the translation of the original. It's very beautiful. Lot of interesting portions are there which uh, reveal the deeper import of our dharma, about our, our moksha, about so many things, about our day-to-day -day life also, how to deal with them. So this whole story is quite uh, fascinating. Briefly I will tell you the story. Many of you must be knowing the story already, but still you can hear the story. Some of the things I mean, I have not read the whole Mahabharata, but only the condensed version I had read. Hmm. And this Bhagavad Gita is found in the middle of this Mahabharata. Madhye Mahabharatam in Bhishma Parva. There are 18 Parva, 18 cantos as though. And Bhishma Parva, in Bhishma Parva, this Bhagavad Gita is there from the 22nd to 42nd, 25th to 42nd chapter of Bhishma Parva is this Bhagavad Gita, 700 shlokas. Actually, the war had already begun. Bhishma Pitamaha had fallen down on the battlefield. Arjuna had hit arrows and he was lying there, not dead because he had that Icha Mrityu. It was a tremendous shock to everyone, including Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was having that hope that Bhishma Pitamaha will help us to win this war. But when he fell down in the battlefield, he was shocked, stunned. And before the war, Dhritarashtra had sent some message, special message to Arjuna. Psychological game he used to play. See, a lot of uh, tricks are there. Psychological game. He had sent some message to Arjuna, demoralizing him. 
saying that oh you are fighting this war you will be killing all your own people does it befit you or why you are doing it for this kingdom and all and all sorts of things he had sent to arjuna and therefore he also spoke what dhritarashtra some of the message which he had sent that alone arjuna started speaking so when bhishma pitamaha fell down on the battlefield dhritarashtra could not imagine that how come my psychological that uh, bombardment did not work i had confused this arjuna i he was sure that arjuna will not fight he will give up the weapon and go away and if a great warrior like arjuna was not fighting there will be total chaos other his brothers will also get confused all other other kings who were supporting the pandavas they might also abandon and it will create total chaos in the uh, thing because that duryodhana was following the path of unrighteousness only duryodhana wanted to not only he took away their kingdom but he wanted to kill he wanted to destroy them it was a path of unrighteousness so this bhagavad gita though it is there in uh, the bhishma parva but the entire mahabharata is like a backdrop like the beautiful backdrop huh? is there it doesn't look like mahabharata but it is just like that in the backdrop of uh, mahabharata is this bhagavad gita mahabharata is a story of the 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 kaurav kuru vamsha only both the pandavas and kauravas their forefather was kuru but later on actually dhritarashtra children were only called kauravas and pandus children their name became pandavas but otherwise both of them they were from the same lineage kuru vamsha so in that a great king kuru and he is to rule this hastinapur in that lineage itself there was this another great king shantanu who was the ruler of a very prosperous kingdom called hastinapur see that uh, as i said some people have misunderstanding that dharma means poverty dharma means you should lead a poor life no no dharma leads to as i said prosperity it is said if you follow dharma even the nature will start giving us wealth because when we treat nature properly we will get wealth from nature because it is all these things get recycled every wealth is there in on earth it can it can last for millions of years all of us can live happily for a long time humanity and all creatures on this earth if we follow the path of dharma so this shantanu was a great king of hastinapur he got married to some portion i will go fast forward ha huh? he got married to uh, ganga yeah now in this when i tell you story don't please ask question how he married to ganga and all so i will just tell some things i also don't know so you just listen to the story so he got married to ganga and from ganga they get, got uh, what you call ha huh, that ganga said i will marry you but i have one condition bapre this conditional marriage and all quite uh, anyway difficult thing so she said that uh, i don't want children you know shantanu said okay no 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 not like that that every child who is born i will just immerse it into the water only shantanu was so much fascinated with her he said okay theek hai so every child who was born she is to immerse into water seven children she immersed in water then the eighth one was born 
and she went to, and she said if you stop me if you do something i will go so eight child was born and she went to imasim and shantanu could not bear with it he stopped he said no no please so he she said okay you have stopped me take this child i am going so she went away and that child was devavrata who later on became known as bhishma very amazing personality in fact in mahabharata he is one of the great teachers of dharma and brahma also amazing personality bhishma pitamah devavrata he is considered to be the avatar of devata only that ashta vasus there the eight vasus are there and he is the eighth one so thus they had some again some curse and all but she wanted them to just take birth and then immediately go back to their state so anyway bhishma pitamaha was born a deva vrata to shantanu and he was to become the king a very young dynamic person you can imagine huh? then what happens so therefore sometimes the mahabharata should not be told to little children also huh? so you should use your discrimin parental discrimination is to be used okay so that uh, shantanu he saw another lady she was married but widow and she was the satyavrati or satyavati uh, and she had uh, married parashar and she had a son her son was vyasa this the ved vyasa ved vyasa ji was her son now she was a widow and the shantanu saw her and he then wanted to marry her first she was actually she had all she is fisher woman she had all the smell of fish only but then it changed it became better anyway so he he married her he went to her father and he said i want to marry your daughter father also had condition this whole mahabharat is full of people giving some condition that's what this words now that that's what i'm saying that dharma one of the interesting thing about dharma is to keep your words but before giving your word think 100 times if you think 101 times that is also better ne no? but once you give you have to keep it you can't go back so his father her father said that you can marry my daughter but i have condition my daughter's children son the eldest son or the children what do you call uh, yeah her children her child should become the king bhishma pitama always there devavrata how can uh, he was the he was the son directly of uh, shantanu so shantanu was totally in dilemma like he was so much attracted towards her but then he could not give this promise he said this is this is cannot be done it is injustice to my son how can i promise but then devara vrata bhishma pitamah came to know about this and he took a vow he said he went there and told that yes i am renouncing my right over the kingdom he said i will not take this kingdom it's my promise so her father said okay you can promise but tomorrow you will marry your children then they will claim they will say nahi nahi hamara hai ye rajya then he said that i am taking a vow not to get married i will remain ajanma brahmachari it was a very powerful and a very strong vow that even the all the devtas they also were stunned and from that time onwards because it was a very 
terrible and powerful vow, he was known as Bhishma. Bhishma means the terrible, powerful. So he took that vow and he, and he remained firm on his vow. That was his path of dharma. So even his father was quite stunned and amazed by his and he was then given the blessing that you will have Ichha Mrityu that whenever you desire then only you can you will die. See dharma gives us that that power. It is said dharmo rakshati rakshitaha one who follows the path of dharma dharma protects that person not only here but here after also. See, all our protection in this world can remain in this world only. Even our friends and relatives and parents and all children, and they can protect so-called us in this world itself. Once that fellow departs from this world, nobody is there to protect. Then our dharma only protects. Dharmo rakshati mrutasya cha. It is said, for one who is dead, Dharma is the protector. Dharma protects that person. Because Dharma is cosmic law, not a local law, which can be broken. One can bribe someone and break that law and all. But these are cosmic law. You can't bribe Yamaraji. With what can you bribe him? You can't bribe him like that. Ne? So, dharma, so follow the path of the, huh? so Bhishma Pitamaha, he took this vow and then through Satyavati, two children were born. Hmm. They were Chitrangada and Vichitravirya. Their name, Chitrangada was the eldest, and Vichitra Virya. Hmm. Very Vichitra name, but that was his name. So, Shantanu, when he passed away, this uh, Chitrangada became the king of Hastinapur. This all story of Hastinapur. Yeah. So, he became the king. But he lived only for a short time after, when he became king, after some, he died immediately. Then his younger brother, Vichitravirya, he became the king of Hastinapur. Bhishma Pitamaha was always there, guiding and advising everyone, advising the kings and all. So Vichitravirya, when he became the king, then what happened that uh, he had to get married. So there was this king of Kashi. He had kept, he had three beautiful daughters. Amba, Ambalika, Amba, Ambika and Ambalika. Hmm. And he had kept a Swayamvar. In the good old days they used to have Swayamvar. Where you know, Swayamvar. Some condition again. Ne? Some of them were so difficult conditions, like in the Ram, Sitaji's Swayamvar, you had to lift the bow. Everyone came, they tried level best. Even to lift the bow was so difficult for them. Ravan also had come and he failed. And it is said that when one person could not try, that many people together started lifting. They said, we will resolve who will marry whom, but first let us just lift that. But they could not lift. And then nobody could lift. And Ramchandra was sitting there. But he was sitting with his teacher, Guru. And he had not come to lift bows and all, so he was sitting quietly. He was that time Raja Janak, he said that I feel this whole world has become devoid of warriors. If I knew that world was 
devoid of warriors, I wouldn't have kept this difficult uh, condition. When he said this, Lakshmana got up and he fired that Janak Maharaj like anything. He said, how dare you speak like this when Ramchandra is sitting here? What do you mean without warriors and all? And this is old Dhanurish you have kept here. I myself can lift it and throw it and break it into pieces and all. What are you talking? He was so this. All the people in that assembly got frightened and all. That time, Vishwamitra ji told Ramchandra ji, Ki uthavu Ram bhanjav shiva chapa. That please, oh Ramchandra ji, get up and break this bow and quieten the mind of Janak Maharaj, pacify him. Then he lifts that bow. So like that, this Swayamvars used to be there. So this Swayamvar was there, but in some Kadbad also used to take place in Swayamvar. So Kashi Raja had kept this Swayamvar and he had not invited this Chitrangada, and Chitra, what do you call, Vichitra Virya. So Bhishma Pitama got real wild. He says, how dare he doesn't invite, this is not good. And Bhishma Pitama goes there and he just abducts all these three girls and brings them. <laughs> um, and he was so strong, nobody could object actually. I don't know what was the condition, those poor fellows were busy doing their condition, all the three, all the three girls disappeared. He just brought them. Amba, Ambika and Ambalika. This Amba, she, on the way, she told Bhishma Pitamaha that, you see, that my, I wanted to marry that fellow who had come there and um, Shalva his name. I wanted to marry him, but now you have abducted and brought me. I am in love with him and all. So Bhishma Pitama said, okay, you go to him. So he leaves her and just carries uh, Ambika and Ambalika. So that Amba, she goes to that shelf. He says, oh, what is this now, Bhishma Pitama, I sent you and all those things, I don't want to marry you. You go back. So she goes back to, uh, again to Bhishma Pitama, Bhishma, Devavrata. And says, uh, he is not willing to marry, so now you marry me. He says that I have taken this vow of not marrying, so I can't marry you. So she gets so annoyed and so angry with Bhishma that she curses him. See, Mahabharata is full of vows and curses and all those things. Huh? And after reading all this, you will not know who cursed whom. <laughs> so she cursed. She said that you have insulted me. I will, I will die now and will be reborn to and become the nimitta for your death. Will become the cause for your death. So she gives up her body, and she is born as the son or the daughter of Drupad. She was called. Shikhandi or Shikhandini, very strange, her birth, she was born as a female, then she used to become male, then again female, so some complex, uh, what you call, way her life was. So Bhishma Pitamaha considered her a female only. And therefore, during the Mahabharata war, she was brought in front of Arjuna as a shield because Arjuna had to fight with Bhishma. So she was brought in front, Shikhandi. And then Bhishma said, I won't fight, because I don't want to fight with her. And Arjuna then hits arrows on Bhishma. So that was the story of Amba. Then with Ambika and Ambalika, Bhishma comes to Hastinapur, and they get married to Vichitravirya. Okay. Now I don't want to tell you which songs they sang and all. <laughs> if they make serial and all, they, then they make something also, additional thing. So, 
that this uh, vichitra virya was really vichitra after marriage one fine morning he dies now this ladies are there no children so according to this old custom our satyavati tells ved vyas ji to do niyoga it is called that you father the children for ambika and ambalika as a uh, they will be the king then so through ved vyas ji ambika through ambika dhritarashtra is born and through ambalika pandu is born but this ved vyas ji was quite a Uh, outwardly a quite a uh, fascinating person fascinating may not be the right word after i describe him so he was totally dark in his complexion and used to smell of fish fisher woman's son so goa people and all they will like it <laughs> me fish smell like yeah, i want to marry but some may not like so he was smelling of fish and very dark so when he came to ambika she was uh, so this scared i mean not scared but seeing his form she did not like she closed her eyes and therefore they say dhritarashtra was born blind and this ambika ambalika she after seeing ved vyas she was so scared she turned white out of fear see every emotion they have their own color also like jealousy is what color blue green <laughs> mm. so she turned white with fear and then therefore pandu was born with that what you call with that fair uh, complexion and weakling hmm. so dhritarashtra and pandu they and then it is because one was blind and one was weak so they said that uh, we should have one more child so this time amba ambika and ambalika they said this is too much so they sent a dasi to vedvaji and a dasi putra was born he was a vidhur he was all fit and fine most intelligent having the knowledge of all the dharma and all everything highly uh, dharmic and wise person a dasi putra he becomes the minister in dhritarashtra's that kingdom he is minister always giving good advice so the dhritarashtra pandu they grieve and then uh, dhritarashtra being the eldest they decided that he should be coronated as the king so he was about to be coronated as the king every all taiyari ho gayi thi hmm उससे जो है म्यूजिक भी बज रहा था द होल एटमोसफियर वॉज वेरी डिवाइन एंड वंडरफुल एंड ही वॉज अबाउट टू बी कॉरोनेटेड दैट टाइम विदुर के विदुर सेड दैट यू कैनॉट हैव अ ब्लाइंड पर्सन एज द किंग द किंग शुड हैव अ विजन a vision without a vision you cannot have a king kaha le jayega samaj ko doesn't know where he is going himself how will he take the world i mean the the kingdom and this is applicable in all periods of time even in modern times we don't have king but we have the governments and all they should have a vision for the society and vision just doesn't mean only for earth and kama for dharma and moksha also we are not here just animals living only for earth and kama 
we have taken birth to follow the path of dharma and ultimately to attain moksha otherwise what is the use of living in this world it is better to be animals then so government should have a vision if they don't have a vision they can't see in future then need not become the king so vidur was very blunt in his speech and all and he said because bhishma pitam was coronating him he said this theek nahi hai though he is the eldest but he can't be the king so everyone they accepted dhritarashtra was most disappointed and they made pandu the younger brother the king pandu's sons became pandava he is pandu so he became the king dhritarashtra had married uh, gandhari gandhari from gandhar desh her brother was a interesting person shakuni he played lot of gadbal role so that gandhari when she came to know that i will be marrying dhritarashtra who is blind she also again took a vow of remaining with a patti uh, this was actually whatever her love and all but both became blind but if she had the eyes and all then it would have resolved lot of issues but she was also she also took that uh, thing therefore the therefore one without vision and one who have the capacity but doesn't want to open and have a vision then the children who are born will be like that only if you symbolically also you take this story if the father let us say have no vision only khao pure aish karo bachche ko hi samjhata hai beta acha kamao acha khao acha pyo paratha khao ghee khao bahut sara ha bas yahi hai duniya mein so no vision and the mother who is intelligent generally mothers are intelligent mother who is intelligent she has put a patti ha pita ji jo kehte wahi karo one person told that my son never listens to me you know very difficult never listens his friend said oh how come my son always listens to me he said what is the secret like he said i told my son you do whatever you want and he listens to me <laughs> so dhritarashtra married gandhari both of them remained blind and they had this uh, 100 children 101 there was this duryodhana was the eldest then there is uh, that girl i mean sister duryodhana sister dushala dushasana and all and uh, in pandu had this five children acha ha so pandu became the king that time the children were not born and pandu got married to kunti and madri so once pandu went to the forest now why did you go to the forest for some hunting and all this kings in the good old days they used to go hunting because that is to keep them active that is to help them to strategize if they have war and all how to plan and this and that so they used to experiment on those poor wild animals so he went to the forest and there he heard some sound he thought some wild animal is there and he shoots but by mistake he shoots a sage called kindama he shoots that sage and the sage before dying he curses him that you will not have children and if you attempt you will die so this pandu got real pandu got real sad by the whole incident he felt very bad that i killed a sage 
So out of that sadness, along with his both his wives, he decided to go and stay in the forest only. And in his absence, then Dhritarashtra was made the king. Dhritarashtra became the king. And Bhishma Pitamaha, because somebody has to be king, so Bhishma Pitamaha, he is to guide. And Dhritarashtra became the king, just to hold on to that kingdom till the right person then later on becomes the king, Pandu's son. So Pandu, when they were there in the forest, Kunti and all, she suddenly remembered that I have a boon. She had a boon. That she could invoke any devatas. Through Pandu they cannot have children, but she could invoke devatas. How did she know it works? She had tried. Before marriage itself, she had invoked Surya Devata and through Surya Devata a son was born to her who is Karna. Karna was born. It was like a shock to her and uh, then she had to put him in a basket and left him and this Karna was raised by uh, ch uh, some charioteer and all. Karna himself did not know that he was Kunti Putra. Then she remembered this and she invoked Lord Yamaraji and the eldest Pandava Yudhishthira was born. Then she invoked Vayu Devata and Bhim was born. Then she invoked uh, Indra Devata and Arjun was born. Then she gave this formula to Madri and she invoked Ashwini Kumar, the twins, and twins were born, Nakul and Sahadev. They were born to her. But then this Pandu, he dies in the forest and Madri also dies. So Kunti takes the uh, responsibility of taking care of all these five children. She comes back to the uh, uh, back to Hastinapur. Here Dhritarashtra had these 101 children, 100 boys and Pandu's five children. Out of them Yudhishthir was the eldest. Second number Bhim. Third number Duryodhan. Hmm. Anyway, you might have different version. So then that was it. Huh. So, uh, Yudhishthir was uh, to be the king, crown king. So, Dhritarashtra, under pressure of Bhishma Pitamaha, Vidur and all the ministers and all, he coronated what to call Yudhishthir as the crown prince. Huh? He will be the, when he grows up, he will be the king. Dhritarashtra did not want it. He wanted his son to become king. But this condition was such, because Pandu was the king, Pandu's eldest son had to be the king, and all those, whatever the, the rules and regulation of those times, because it was a dynastic type of uh, structure was there. <laughs> ah, I am talking about Mahabharata. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so don't, I should not get distracted. So where was I? Huh? Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir was a very, very dharmic person extremely dharmic, following the path of dharma, extremely. Then Bhima was very strong and powerful, having great muscles, strength. Arjuna, he was a great archer. Nakul Sadev, they were very intelligent. Each one of them, they had their own 
ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ಆಬ್ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ಅ ಧಾರ್ಮಿಕ್ ಫೆಲೋ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ವೆನ್ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಸಮ್ ಹೌ ಕಿಲ್ ದೆಮ್ ನೀ ರಹೇಗಿ ಬಾಸ್ ನ ಬಜೆಗಿ ಬಾಸ್ರಿ ಟೈಪ್ ಸೊ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಕಿಲ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೊ ಹಾಂ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೇನ್ ವೈಲ್ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಪಿತಾಮಹ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಡ್ ದ್ರೋಣಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಆರ್ಚರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೀಚ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆರ್ಚರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ವಾರ್ಫೇರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬಿಕಮ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಧರ್ಮಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೊ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದುರ್ಯೋಧನ ಟ್ರೈಡ್ all sorts of tricks to kill them but he could not succeed later on uh, what you call uh, uh, yudhishthira was supposed to become the king then what happens uh, this uh, they come after education and all they come back to hastinapur uh, in there this um, duryodhana along with his father and all they hatch a plan and they say that uh, we have built a nice other palace for you because they had come from the forest when pandu died and all so they said you live in that nice palace but this palace was made up of lac which can be easily burnt so all this mother and the five the children they were there in the in that palace they were to be burnt and dhritarashtra was also involved in this plan shakuni and all those things they had all this master plan so but vidur came to know and he sent a message that you better escape from that place so before they could burn the house down they escaped to the forest the house got burnt and by coincident some one lady and five children had come there they get burnt so they think that this pandavas and kunti died and this five pandavas brothers and kunti start staying in the forest and out of this all this jhamela they say we will just stay in the forest thereafter Uh, and this uh, duryodhana and you know, everyone thinks that they are gone they are dead then again there is another swayamvar happening and this time it was of draupadi draupadi swayamvar the beautiful daughter of drupad and then the swayamvar lot of all these prince and everyone had come and the condition was there was this uh, fish which was artificial fish which was uh, moving uh, like this uh, on top and the archer has to first uh, put that bow and string the bow and all and look into the water below and shoot at the eye of that fish okay yeah? quite a complex thing see that in the reflection itself you will not know whether the fish is moving this way or this way and all you should know properly see there are some uh, birds or there are some uh, what you call ha uh, birds only like the king fishers and all they even they can in one swift they can go and pick up that fish they have to make way for that uh, what you call the parallax or something it is called refraction and all fish might be actually here but it is seen here because of that water but they know exactly and in one go they just pick it up and take it similarly here arjuna had to i mean the person had to look into the water and shoot at the eye of that fish so lot of people were there they tried then karna also got up karna had also gone but then draupadi said no i won't allow him to participate in this for whatever reason huh? lot of other reasons are there so he got very wild and all and that time uh, because she said you are not equal and all then duryodhana he made him the 
king he accepted him as a brother uh, i mean friend and all lot of internal stories are there but finally uh, one brahman five brothers were there so one of them came nobody recognized them as pandavas so uh, they laughed uh, this is all of us we failed and this fellow what is he doing so arjuna he came he just picked up the bow and shot in one go the eye of that fish so he got married to drupadi draupadi and then again they were staying in the forest so again he all the five brothers they went to the forest krishna and balram were there in their swam were so they krishna came to know that these are the five the pandavas only so he followed them in the forest and there you know the story when they arrived at their hut they announced from outside only to their mother that oh mother look what we have brought so mother without looking she said all of you you share whatever you have brought you share so draupadi became the wife of all the five pandavas acha kahan tak story abhi ha then uh yeah krishna bhagwan told them that now don't stay in the forest now you come back to hastinapur so again they come back to hastinapur and there they decide that ek kham ka jhagda bagda band karo they finally decide that we will divide the kingdom into two so they kept one half hastinapur for duryodhana and for dhritarashtra and all and they made another half and they gave it to the pandavas where pandavas they established a new kingdom called indraprastha idhar hi 10 minute ka road hai <laughs> traffic agar hai to aadhe ghante lagte hai so indraprastha was established here in delhi then what happened that story i will tell you tomorrow Okay. Om. Om.